Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're reviewing this Toolkit RC M6 multifunctional charger. So this is the M6 model multifunctional charger by Toolkit RC. And this is a smart charger. It charges with a maximum wattage of 150 watts, 10 amps, and it's one to six S. So on the back here, there's just some specs and uh, warnings and just some information about the charger. Opening the box, we get this little pamphlet and inside the pamphlet, there's some instructions and this is just like a little manual. So there's also some more information in here. So if you're interested in any of this, you can pause the video. And here's the English side. So there's some stuff right there. Looking at the inside of the box, we have the charger. And then right here, there is a USB cable, which is for updating the firmware on there. And you can plug it into your computer and also plug it into the port right there. So right here we have the charger. Um, on this side we have the output. This is just for when you're using the charger as a power supply or to charge smaller batteries. Um, right here is the balance port. So it says two to success and the box is one to success. So I'm pretty sure it's two to success. So you probably wanna follow that. Um, on the other side we have the input. It's DC seven to 28 volts. Um, these are both male XT60 ports right here. Um, and then right here we have the USB. The USB port is used for updating the firmware, but it can also be used to charge other devices like your phone, for example, um, that use just a standard 5 volt, 2.1 amps. Um, so if you have a battery plugged into here, you can just charge other devices that use USB. Um, on the back, there is a cooling fan which will turn on after a certain temperature is reached and you can set that temperature in the settings. There's these little feet that come out on each side and you can use that to prop up the charger so that airflow gets in. and cools the charger properly. And that's basically all of the external features of this little charger. So now we'll plug it in and I'll show you guys some of the settings and how to use it. So right here I have this 4S uh, 1550 milliamp hour battery. So that fits the input voltage right here. So I'm gonna plug this in and you get a little beep. And so you have your four main menus here. To select menus, you click this button and then to exit, you click this one, and then you can scroll with these arrows, and you just tap it. So starting with the charging menu. So you have three different profiles that you can set up right here. So any three main types of batteries that you use, you can put those configurations in there for ease of access. Um, looking at the menus, the battery types include lithium polymer, uh, lithium polymer high voltage, uh, lithium iron phosphate, lithium ion, nickel metal hydride, and lead acid. Looking at the end voltage, this will change based off the type of battery that you have selected. Um, for LiPos, it's 4.2 volts. Um, you can go up to 4.25 volts or go down to 4.15 volts. Cells, it will automatically detect the cells that you have plugged in or you can set that amount. So you can go down to 1S or go up to 6S. Charge current, you can set this up to 10 amps or you can go all the way down to 0.1 amps. Discharge current goes um, all the way up to 2 amps, so it's maximum right now, and then goes down to 0.1 amps. Um, right here we have charge, so if you have nothing plugged in, it will tell you that. So, I have my battery right here, so you can plug this into the output right there. And then here's the balance lead. So you want the positive right here to be on the positive side, and then all the way on the far left, like so. And now when I press charge, it will tell me the voltage it's charging to. So 12.6, which is 4.2 volts per cell because this is a three cell uh, 450 battery. Um, and right before I start this actually, I'm gonna change the charge current to 0.4 just to be safe. So now I'm ready to charge, I can press okay. So right here, it's displaying the uh, current that it's charging at, the voltage that the battery is currently at. Up there is the voltage that the main battery is at, so the battery it's powering the charger. There's the time that the battery's been charging, and then the temperature of the charger. 
there's the cells being displayed down there, the voltages for each one. And then there's a percentage for how far the battery is in terms of charge from you know storage level. And then there's the watts, the milliamp hours. And yeah, so you can press the down arrow. It will display um, resistance. Right now it's not displaying any numbers, but normally it will, it will display the resistance of each cell, which is also a good uh, thing to know. So you could press stop um, by backing out and then press okay. The voltage and the amps will drop down and then you're good to back out. So if you can hear that, the fan actually just turned on because it got to a certain uh, temperature. It's pretty quiet actually, which is nice. That's basically it. Um, if you want to go to storage charge, you can actually set the voltage per cell in this menu. So I'm going to set it to 3.8 and then you can press OK and then it will start storage charging the battery and all of the settings apply for each of the three menus so you can see all the same stats and yeah so then you can press stop and it will drop back down to zero and you can back out so that's basically it for this menu you have your three profiles and all of your settings and then your three types of charging uh, types that you can select from all right so going on to the next menu we have measure so this basically measures different types of signals and the first option though is battery so it'll actually measure the battery that you have plugged in so right now it's measuring this battery. So it will tell you all the stats, just like when you're charging it, the percentage, the voltage. The delta is the voltage difference between each of the cells. So then this is the highest um, difference. So the highest difference right now is fluctuating between 0.03 and 0.04, um, which you can see also from these values. And there's the temperature of the charger. You can also go right here and press balance and it will balance the battery. So my battery is already balanced, so it's good to go. And then you can also go and change this voltage to internal resistance, and it will display that. Um, mine is not displaying currently, um, but it will also display the delta for that too. You also have PWM, PPM, and SBUS. So this could be useful if you um, are trying to display values on a receiver, for example. If you have a receiver that you could plug into these three uh, pins, then that would definitely work um, in terms of displaying signal. So each one has their own uh, type of display. So there's all your channels and stuff. And yeah. So in terms of the measure tab, on the field it might be inconvenient to plug in a big battery and then plug in a smaller battery and to check it with the measure option. So what you can actually do is instead of plugging in two batteries, you can plug in one of the batteries to the output port which seems weird at first but plugging in the battery will actually display um, all of its stats straight from the measure tab and you can't back out of the measure tab it's permanently stuck in the um, measure tab when you plug it into the output port it's a cool feature if you just need to check your battery really quick on the field and you don't want to go through all the menus and plug in two batteries you can just plug in the single battery and it will display everything so going back to the normal input port we have output next. So in output, you can actually use this charger as a power supply. So if you press OK, you can set um, different, uh, basically setups. So there's custom, through. So there's just different default uh, Mavic. There's just tons of different uh, setups by default. Or you can go to custom and just set your own voltage. And so basically everything will output through this XT60. So you can basically just set the voltage and current for anything that you might want to power off of this um, this charger and another battery. So once you have all your stuff set, you can press start. And you'll see all the numbers start going up. And then you have all of your specs, so wattage, time, temperature, battery voltage right here. And then if you want to stop it, you'll see all the numbers go down. And that's basically it. So you can, it's kind of cool. You can power different things through this port. Um, if it, you can somehow use an XT60 or pins. So that's the power output tab. So going to the PWM menu, if you press okay, um, you can basically set the mode um, in which the channel moves. So if I press okay and go up, you'll see there's different types. So basically just different speeds that you can set. And so I have a servo right here, so you can actually plug this in to the side here.
And as you see, you can actually test the different values. So I can move this up and it'll go faster. And there's also manual. You can go through and kind of play around with this, but um, change the milliseconds and her um, hertz, but um, that's kind of cool for testing. Going to the PPM, PPM isn't really made for servos, so it's just gonna twitch around kind of. But you can also change this value, you know, bring it up. So if you have anything that uses PPM, you can test those different channels in here. Um, going to SBUS, SBUS is the same situation except obviously it's SBUS, so you have to have something that uses SBUS, but you can uh, go through and change different values of different channels here too. So that's the output menu for this charger. Um, it's pretty cool. You can test different configurations. So going to settings, um, you can change the input value. So the lowest is seven volts, highest is 28. You can change the wattage. So the highest, so it does go higher than 150, but obviously you don't want to do that because you risk ruining the charger. You could burn it out. Um, safe temperature is the lowest is 60 um, degrees Celsius and the highest is 80 degrees Celsius. Um, safe time is just the amount of time that the charger will stay on before turning itself off. Um, this is just to protect um, yourself from fires, just in case you over discharge the battery. Um, it's more, it's obviously just a safety feature. So the discharge mode, internal will basically um, use internal resistance to discharge the battery that you have plugged into here. But the cool thing is you can actually switch it to recycle. And recycle will actually, when you're discharging the battery here, it will actually put that energy back into this battery. So it's an awesome little feature so that you don't really waste as much energy. And then you have idle beep. This is just when you're inactive, not using the charger. It will beep to let you know that you still have a battery plugged in and it'll just warn you. And it basically just lets you know that you should probably unplug the battery. We have S plus value, backlight. This goes up to 10, goes all the way down to one. And that's obviously just for power consumption. Um, and you have buzzer, you can change the pitch. You could turn it off too. Goes up to seven. Default on four. Hub support is off. Language is set by to English by default. And then if you press OK on this default setting, it will basically ask you to confirm it. If you press OK again, all the settings are now reset back to their factory defaults. So that's basically it for this charger. It's a pretty cool little charger. It has a lot of features for how compact and tiny it is, um, but it's definitely a great little on-field charger. Um, it's cool that you can unplug any battery, you know, unplug it into here and view any of the numbers that you need to look at. Um, so that's just an awesome little feature. And overall, it's just, it's really cool. So if you have any questions about this charger, let me know in the comments um, and I'll try to answer them. And yeah, um, I'll have a link to this charger. Uh, it's well, It'll be an affiliate link from Banggood. It doesn't cost you any extra to get it from the affiliate link, but it does support my channel and will allow me to review other products in the future too. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.